What's up guys? You already know, it's me, Kira. And this video may seem weird, cause like, do you even need to practice that much tech skill with Jigglypuff? Is there even that much you can do with her on your own? Etc, etc. But, since you guys kept asking, we decided to make one. So get ready for a wild ride, and here we go. First things first, you gotta work on using back air. Big surprise, I know guys. Despite what anyone says, being able to aim and time your back airs perfectly can be pretty difficult, especially when you're running through the gauntlet of giant hitbox you'll inevitably have to face down as a Jigglypuff player. There are three steps to using back airs. Step 1. Practice the timing. By holding up, you can buffer every jump after your first one. Try to time your back airs just as you jump, so that they come out as soon as possible while still rising up. I'm not saying you have to use the control stick in-game, but this can help you find the fastest possible timing to do them at. Holding the control stick at a 45 degree angle behind you will make you turn around and do a forward air. That is, unless you time your back air perfectly, then you won't turn around. So practice up that timing. Step 2. Switch up the types of back airs. Short hop one way and see how far that takes you on every stage. Auto cancel it, do a real late back air and L cancel it, fade back right when you start the back air, fade back at the last second, short hop away and drift back in, etc etc. And that's just for short hops. You can do full hop aerials, short hop double jump aerials, no fast fall, early fast fall, and anything in between. You can full hop with crazy drift into like a randomly timed back air. See our advanced guides on aerial drift and fast fall timings to see more examples. This is really helpful to avoid getting punished and getting in extra hits when your opponents won't expect you to be there. Also, full hop rising forward air to falling up air in particular can be really useful in certain matches. Step 3. Practice your aim. One way to do this is to practice edge cancels with your aerials, however, you can also just pick a spot on the stage and try to place a perfectly spaced back air there. Start from various spots and see what the best way to land that perfect aerial is. There is no limit to the variations you can use, so feel free to be creative here. And if you do get stuck, there's always Hungrybox videos. And of course, you should do these steps with all of your aerials, since they all have slightly different timings. In particular, up airs can be awkward to time, so falling up airs, late up airs, instant up airs, and so on and so forth can all be good to practice. Then you gotta practice your L cancel. All of Jigglypuff's aerials have 10 frames of lag if you L cancel them, except for her down air which is 15 frames of lag. This is actually really laggy compared to other characters, so you have to be as good on the timing as you possibly can be. Late back air to up smash, dash attack, or another instant aerial is supremely important. Even just practicing jumping again as soon as you land can help with this. Neutral air and back air can also be auto cancelled during a short hop, meaning that their animation ends before you even touch the ground so you don't need to L cancel. This is actually better, because then you only have 4 frames of lag instead of the usual 10. Neutral air must be done instantly, but back air has more leeway. Neutral air in particular is useful here, because you can also auto cancel it from higher up, making it a good option to cover space while also being lagless. You'll have to play around with how high up you start your neutral air, and when you fast fall to know exactly how it can auto cancel. And of course, empty landing into turnaround grabs, aerials, or any ground move is also useful. This is one of her prime ways of mixing up her shield pressure, along with super late aerials, so practice these as well. You'll probably want to use the 20xx training pack for this part to make sure the computers DI and tech randomly. I still recommend 3.02, but it can work with 4.05 if you change the CPU settings like so. However, they won't act immediately on wake up, so it's not as good for practicing tech chasing. Alternatively, you can set the shield propensity to 100 if you want to start combos with grab. Work on your up throw combos on space animals. Up throw rest is a no brainer, but on some stages they won't die at 0%, so you'll have to do a short hop up air and re grab into another up throw. Sometimes I find that double jumping into your rest is easier, especially if they slight DI, but practice this a lot so that you never miss it. It may seem easy, but missing just one can cost you a whole match. If they DI full behind you, you can short hop back air them, and if they DI in front of you, you can short hop up air them. Both of these are standard follow-ups. For the forward DI, you can also throw in some pounds to mix up their DI. Okay, also practice up airing on side platforms and tech chasing with aerials or even rest. Getting used to these timings can net you a ton of extra stocks, and while predicting your opponent's tech does help with this, you'll still want to get used to seeing each tech animation. 
At higher percents, Jigglypuff can get a free grab or up smash off of a grounded drill. She can actually even get a rest, but that's slightly more complicated. Just notice that whenever they go into this weird flipping animation, you know it can true combo. Too low percent, and they won't flip anywhere, but too high, and they'll rise up into the air. This is a good way to get grabs and shield pokes, and also a good way to kill floaties, so practice it on all different characters. From a platform, Jigglypuff can wave land off, drop through the platform, or shield drop from it to any of her aerials. Knowing when each of these is appropriate is very useful to add in new angles and timings to your movement. You should also know how to reach the top platform with any of your attacks. A full hop to double jump up air can touch the top platform on Battlefield, for example, but you can do the same from a short hop on Yoshi's Story. You can also wave land off the side platforms to reach the top as well, and back air or forward air can sometimes shield poke if you continue to pressure them. Whether you're planking or not, you'll want to be comfortable recovering with Puff offstage and from the ledge. Here's what you'll need to know. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this helped you guys out. For the comment wars we want to know, what do you think is Jigglypuff's hardest matchup? Besides Fox, I mean. Personally, I think Jigglypuff is super fun to use, and she's one of my favorite matchups to play against as well, so I hope we can see more Puff players in the future.